So I've talked about it quickly quite a few times in the past, even covering it in an initial review when I bought it on AppSumo, which I'll link in the description below. But today I want to look at one of the more advanced features and go over why I think something like this makes looking at quickly something that anybody that wants to work with Gutenberg and wants to create more advanced dynamic sites really should look into. So we're going to look at the Query Builder today. This is kind of a first look just to give you an overview of all of the functions that are available inside there so you can get a feel for how integral this could be to your web design projects. Okay, so first of all, let's just hop over into my install of Quickly so I can show you what I'm talking about. I've already created a blank page and what we're going to do is we're going to pull in one of the templates, one of the blog templates, so we can use that as the basis for this particular overview. Let's come up to the Quickly button in the top left hand corner. So we just go over to the blog templates and we're going to grab one of these, just pull this in to use this as the basis. So we'll grab this one and import it. So that now loads in the template with all of the relevant components. We can clear this up. I'm going to get rid of some of the distractions, which I don't think we need. So let's open up the panel from the left hand side. Let's toggle this down and let's get rid of this initial div. And that'll just leave us now with the query block. So this is how you'd go about working with quickly to create your queries. If we open this up, you can see inside there, we've got our query template and then it breaks it down into the first component element. So if you've ever used anything like this, you'll know that you create the design for the first loop item and then everything uses that as a template, pulling in the relevant dynamic content. So if we come out to the query option, come out to the right hand side, you can see we get this option under query settings. Now you may not see this straight away because this might be set up to inherit the query from the URL. You can use this for things like related posts and those kinds of things. If we open that up, you can see that's now disable the option because it's pulling in that query. So if you see that, all you need to do is click on the blue circle and that will give you the query editor back. It's kind of a little bit hidden away, but it is there. So now if we open this up, this opens up the Query Builder. Now if you've ever used Jet Engine and you've seen the Query option inside there, this is probably going to feel familiar to you because it works in a very, very similar fashion. And that's only a good thing because they both have a huge amount of control to create really complex queries should you need them or to keep it as really simple as you need to. It really comes down to what you're looking for. So if we take a look, you can see we've given a query ID and we can choose where we want to query. In this example, we've got posts selected, but you can choose from terms users. And if you have custom post types created, they'd be listed as well. So you can access the various different kinds of content. We're going to leave that set to posts. Underneath, you can see it says post type. And again, if we click and drop this down, any of our post types will be listed, including custom post types. But what I really like about this, what makes this a lot more powerful than the likes of the built-in query options inside a tool like Elementor is we can stack these on top of each other. So if you wanted to query posts and a custom post type and combine those into one loop, you could do that inside you. Now, yes, you can do that with Elementor, but it does take a little bit more of an advanced way of working with the custom queries, which again, I'll link in the description below where I show you how to get started if you want to see how to do that. But coming back to this, you can stack these. So if we wanted to query the media and the post, you can see we can just simply stack these on top of each other. Let's remove that and just stick to the posts for this example. You can see we can exclude current. So if we are using this to build up a query and we want to use this for related posts and not show the post that's actually being selected, we can choose this to exclude the current if we want to. You can also come in, you can include posts, you can exclude posts, so you have a ton of options. But the more power comes into this now when we take a look on the left-hand side. And if I scroll down, you can see there's an awful lot of different options. First of all, you've got your order and your order by. So we can come in and we can choose the order by a lot of different options inside you. So you can see there's tons of different options, including your menu order, meta values, and so on. So you could use this in a lot of different ways to choose how you order things. And then you can choose whether you want ascending or descending order, the standard options. Pagination, you can simply come in and enable this. So you can see if I want to change this over to have more posts per page, I can do that inside here. So we set that to something like six. You'll see now behind that increases the number of posts. We can also set an offset value. If you want to create more unique looking designs, you can offset by a number of posts. And this allows you to create multiple different query and query templates with different kinds of designs. And then you can offset one against the other so you don't overlap with the number of posts. Most of the tools you'll see that work with queries, LMS, or, or those kinds of tools will give you this kind of offset option. We'll set that back though to zero. And you've got the option for page inside here. We can choose to include or exclude sticky posts. 
you can come in and you can see you can filter based upon the author and again we can open this up currently only have one author inside you but you can if you want to filter this down and you can pull in dynamic data as well and you can see we can grab sources from wordpress advanced custom fields so if you're using custom fields custom meta fields you can use that inside you or if you're using wordpress you can do that and you can see then you can come in and you can refilter this and there's a lot of different options let's get rid of that for now though you can directly choose the author name, has authors, doesn't have authors. You can come in and use searches inside you. So you can see we can search for a keyword or we can use dynamic data one more time. Different mime types if you want to use that. Comments, so we can choose the number of comments that have actually been applied. So if you wanted to show your most commented posts, for example, you can use this to choose the number of comments or use dynamic data values, how to compare it. And if we take a look at the comparison options, you can see everything you should need is inside there. So you can build up really complex queries. And the nice thing is all of these are stackable. So you can set your order, your pagination, your author, your comments, permissions, all these things can be stacked on top of each other to create really comprehensive queries. If we come down to permissions, you can see we can choose what different user roles and so on are available inside you. So you can see there's an awful lot of options that go way beyond just, you know, your typical admin, editor, author, those kinds of things. And if you set up custom values inside your capabilities using third party tools or custom code this into your functions file, you could access those inside here as well. A real abundance of options. Status, you wanna choose whether this is published, future, and any custom ones you may set up, you can see all the options are inside there. Passwords, you can set whether it has a password or not. You can come in and do taxonomy queries. And the nice thing with this is, again, you can stack multiple different queries on top of each other. So for example, if we come in, you can see taxonomy name. You can set what value you want inside there. You can then add another one in and another one in and you can start to build these up and you can choose whether this is an and or relationships if you want everything to be all those different criteria to be matched up you just set the and in there so all three would have to match if you wanted any of the three to match you could just choose the or value you can delete these you can copy them you can do whatever you kind of want with them we come into edit, you can then see inside there, we can now choose all the different options. So you can see multiple tax, tax query. So we're stacking multiple ones. Dynamic options are available inside you. You can see we can choose the different types of taxonomies. And again, depending upon how you've got WordPress set up, whether you're using custom post types, custom taxonomies, custom tags, all those kinds of things, all of those will be available, including some additional options that are part of WordPress itself. So you can tap into those as well. You can choose terms from here. You can see we can choose the field and we can choose what field we want to reference, the operator we want to use. And again, we've got a range of different operators inside here. So we can stack all these up. We can choose whether they include the children values. We can enable or disable that from there. There's an absolute shed load of options that you can use inside here to stack things on top of each other. So a really comprehensive way of working. Same thing goes for meta queries. Again, we can stack these on top of each other, use that and or operator. And again, we've got date queries. So if you want to query things based upon various different dates, you can do that. So you can see we can open up a date query. We can come in and edit this. And inside here, we've now got a ton of options to break this down. And again, full dynamic data options inside here. So you can open the dynamic data up, choose your source, whether it be WordPress as a source or advanced custom fields, if you're creating custom fields inside here. So you can choose that. You can then choose what field group you want. Or if you're using WordPress, you can choose whatever WordPress options you want inside here. Or you can manually enter the values yourself. You could even come down and choose the options for before, for after, for compare, how you want to compare those. And again, all those different operators, including regular expressions, not regular expressions, are like, there's an absolute boatload of options inside you for this. So if you can't find how to build up your query from the options you have inside you, I don't really think there's much you can kind of do. This is pretty comprehensive. Let's remove those from there. You'll also find that once you've set up your queries, if you want to, you can actually grab the code that's generated and use this wherever you want. So you could create your custom queries inside here with all the different options, and then you could simply output that code. And then if you wanted to modify it and use it somewhere else inside WordPress itself, you could do that, but taking the majority of the hard work inside the query builder to do all of that kind of heavy lifting for you. And that's kind of what I wanted to show you. It's not a kind of tutorial, it's more a case of if you're looking to get into working with more dynamic websites and you've been looking for how can you can do that with 
uh, Gutenberg and having a good tool to be able to do it, you may want to take a look at quickly because it's very much like oxygen for Gutenberg. So if you like that oxygen way of working and you like the control and all the features you have, but you're kind of looking for a Gutenberg way of doing it, or maybe what's happening in oxygen at the moment isn't to your liking and you want to look for an alternative tool, then maybe something like this is worth checking out. I'll put links in the description so you can take a look at that. I would also recommend taking a look at the Quickly channel for more video tutorials and also David McCann from WebTNG's tutorials on getting started with Quickly. Again, I'll put links to all of these in the description below. As always though, I'd love your feedback on what you think about this query editor, what you think of Qu Quickly in general, and as always, any other questions you may have, drop those in the comment section below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.